harakatuhum wa humumuhum wa uzumuhum lillahi la lil khalqi wa shaytani ni'mar rafiq li talib as-subul allati tufdi ila al khayrat wal ihsan tufdi ila al khayrat wal ihsan inna alhamdulillah nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nastaghfiruh wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyiati a'malina man yahdihillahu fala mudilla lahu ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يقول الله تبارك وتعالى في محكم تنزيله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار فيا معاشر الفضلاء ما دي ريسبكتد برادرز اند سيستر ان اسلام اي ادفايس ماي سيلف فيرست اند فور موست ان اول اوف يو ليسنينج وذ ذا بيست اوف ادفايس تو في الله عز وجل ان اوبن اند ان سيكريت We will have to know that whatever happens to us in this dunya in our lives everything that happens happens for a reason everything that happens in this world every step that you take every decision that you make is by the permission of Allah azza wa jal no soul no human no creation can bring about good for you or bring about evil and harm towards you or to you except that Allah has decreed for it to happen so don't ever forget that always be in mind that everything that happens everything that you do is that is by the permission of Allah azza wa jal if Allah azza wa jal did not write it for you to happen the way it's supposed to happen for something to occur then know that it wasn't supposed to occur whether you will do everything you can to achieve that thing an authentic hadith kama qala nabiy sallallahu alayhi wasallam when he's advising the young companion the young shab he says ya ghulam inni u'allimuka kalimatin he says to this young shab oh young man i'm going to teach you a couple of statements phrases and words ihfadillah ihfadak be mindful of allah azza wa jal always be mindful of Allah azza wa jal and Allah the almighty will preserve you and he will protect you ihfadillah yahfadak preserve Allah azza wa jal and he will preserve and he will what always be mindful of Allah azza wa jal and he will protect you and preserve you ihfadillah tajiduhu tajahak if you are someone that constantly remembers Allah azza wa jal we have shortcomings each and every one of us Our good deeds go up some days we wake up and we have this energy and this burst to do goodness and then at times we become weak so remember always be mindful of Allah azza wa jal and you will find him and then the hadith carries on and it mentions what the prophet sallam mentions idha sa'alta fas'al Allah idha sa'alta fas'al Allah if you're going to ask anyone brothers and sisters if you're in dire need of a calamity that has befallen upon you to go away a difficult trial and tribulation you're being tested to the limit allah azza wa jalla is testing you to the limit don't ask the human beings because they're like you they won't be able to benefit you more than allah azza wa jalla will be able to benefit you allah azza wa jalla was the one that decreed 
for that calamity to befall upon you, for a wisdom, for a reason. So if you're going to ask anyone, إِذَا سَأَلْتَ فَاسْأَلِ اللَّهِ وَإِذَا سَتَعَنْتَ فَاسْتَعِنْ بِاللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ If you need to ask, if you're in need of aid and assistance, then ask Allah Azza wa Jal to aid you and to assist you. And then the hadith carries on and mentions, وَعْلَمْ So the Prophet Sallam is telling this young shab, know أَنَّ الْأُمَّةَ لَوْ اجْتَمَعَتْ that if the whole of mankind, the whole of the nation, all of mankind was together, together, for what reason? For what purpose? اعلم وعلم لو أن الأمة لو اجتمعت على to what all of the nation, if they were to gather together, على أن ينفعوك بشيء to be of benefit to you, to help you, to aid you. If all of them was to gather together and to get together in order to benefit you. لم ينفعوك بشيء إلا ما قد كتب الله لك. If the whole nation was to come together, you were in dire need of assistance, of aid, and they were to come together, the whole nation, they won't be able to benefit you except that which Allah عز وجل has decreed. Except that which Allah عز وجل had decreed. So always be mindful of Allah. Always ask Allah Azza wa Jal. Always return back to Allah Azza wa Jal. Why? Because Allah Azza wa Jal informs us to. Allah Azza wa Jal, there is no barrier between you and your Lord. There's nothing more that differentiates me and you or him and her. There is nothing. If you want to ask Allah Azza wa Jal, you don't need to go and ask someone who in your eyes may be their righteous. Or maybe you think they have understanding of the deen. If you want Allah Azza wa Jal to help your situation, to guide your children, to guide you, to save you from evil, to help you with regards to marriage, to help you in your financial situation, you don't need to ask humans. You don't need to ask mankind. Even if mankind was able to benefit you, Ya Abdullah, even if someone was and they had the capability to benefit you, if you ask them once, twice, three times, four times, eventually they'll get tired. Allah Azza wa Jal never gets tired, ikhwani. Allah Azza wa Jal never gets tired. Ask him a million times. He never gets tired. The hadith carries on to mention. وَعْلَمْ أَنَّ الْأُمَّةَ لَوْ اجْتَمَعَتْ عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَنْفَعُوكَ بِشَيْءٍ لَمْ يَنْفَعُوكَ بِشَيْءٍ إِلَّا مَا قَدْ كَتَبَهُ اللَّهُ so this is the first portion. If they were to gather together to benefit you, they won't be of benefit except that which Allah Azza wa Jal had decreed. And know, وَعْلَمْ أَنَّ الْأُمَّةِ لَوْ اجْتَمَعُوا عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَضُرُّوكَ بِشَيْءٍ لَمْ يَضُرُّوكَ بِشَيْءٍ إِلَّا مَا قَدْ كَتَبَهُ اللَّهُ لَكِ If they were to gather together this whole nation to come together in order to cause you harm, as many times people you see, they come in your way. They want to stop you from doing good. They want you stop, to stop you from worshipping Allah Azza wa Jal. You don't need to be afraid of them. وَلَا تَخَافُوهُمْ Allah Azza wa Jal tells you, don't be afraid of them. Don't be afraid of anyone. Say Allah Azza wa Jal. وَخَافُونِ إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ As Allah mentions, that if you're afraid, be afraid of Allah Azza wa Jal. If the Ummah was to gather together, and they were to unite in order to cause you harm, they won't be able to cause you any sort of harm, except that which Allah Azza wa Jal had decreed and written for you. Allah Azza wa Jal is informing us, Ikhwani, that if you are in need of anything, ask Allah. Don't be afraid of anyone. Be afraid of Allah Azza wa Jal. Because He is the one that created you. Jalla Jalalu. And then the hadith mentions, Rufi'at al-Aqlam wa Jaffat al-Suhuf. That the pens have been what? Lifted and the ink has dried. And this authentic hadith, which is reported in Tirmidhi, it's clear and it's enough and sufficient for us to know that always be mindful of Allah Azza wa Jal. Always be mindful of Allah Jalla Jalal. How many of us, when we wake up in the morning, are mindful of Allah? Ask yourself, today in the morning, when you woke up, did you thank Allah Azza wa Jal for giving you another chance, another opportunity to worship Him? This is the meaning of the hadith, always be mindful of Allah. How many of us, when we have been given blessings after blessings after blessings, we sit down, we've come back from work, we're with our family members, we're about to eat, we forget to say Bismillah. There's something so small, light upon the tongue. 
heavy with regards to what? Being from those that get rewarded. Doesn't Allah Azza wa Jal, Ya Abdullah, ask yourself, isn't Allah deserving of you showing gratitude to him, Jalla Jalalu, and he has given you eyes. You are in this masjid today because of Allah Azza wa Jal, the fact that he favored and had mercy on you. So how are you showing your gratitude to Allah Azza wa Jal? He has given you an intellect to think, eyes to see, ears to hear, limbs. You're able to walk. You're able to think. Akramakumullah, you're able to relieve yourselves. This is a blessing in itself. You have children. So all of these basic things, and you're living, you're breathing. That in itself is a blessing and a mercy from Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah Azza wa Jal tells us in the Quran, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانِ فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي لَعَلَّهُمْ مَاذَا؟ لَعَلَّهُمْ يُرْشِدُونَ Allah Azza wa Jal is informing us that if they ask about me, my servants, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي Tell them, inform them, Allah Azza wa Jal is near with regards to what? Knowing what you need. If you need Allah Azza wa Jal, Allah is available for you to call onto Him and to supplicate to Him 24 7. Human beings are not free all the time. So remember, all the time, make sure, and it should be something that's incumbent upon each and every one of us that we call to Allah Azza wa Jal. If they are in need of me, let them know that I am close. If they call unto me and they ask and they supplicate to me, then I will answer their du'as. Ya Ikhwani, it's very clear that within this ayah, it's a proof for us to try our best to always be mindful of Allah Azza wa Jal. How many of us are married? We have sexual relationships with our, with our spouses. We forget to say the du'a. The basics of basics, Ikhwani. Before you go to the toilet, once again, how many of us teach our children? How many of us do it? How many of us forget to eat with the right hand and we eat with the left hand? How many of us, when we finish praying salah, we don't do our adhkar, we're rushing, going to work? Yes, do that which you need to do in order to get your sustenance and your provision. But don't forget that Allah Azza wa Jal has given you blessings after blessings after blessings after blessings. So be a thankful servant to Allah Azza wa Jal. That's the least that you can do. The Prophet وسلم, as an example for us. He was from those that was what? Infallible. And then he would wake up in the night to pray until it was seen that which would happen to his what? His ankle downwards. Bleed. And then when they would ask him, Ya Rasulullah, you've been forgiven your previous and your sins to come. What did he respond? How did he respond to his companions when they told him this? He said, Afala akuna abdan shakhu. Should I not be a thankful servant of Allah Azza wa Jal? So how many of you are thankful slaves, thankful servants? How many of you represent Islam? Always be mindful of Allah Azza wa Jal, Jalla Jalalu. قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أو كما كما قال يقول الله تبارك وتعالى Allah Azza wa Jal mentions in Hadith Qudsi أنا عند ظن عبدي به وأنا معه the Prophet said that Allah mentioned Hadith Qudsi, I am as my servants think of me in terms of what I'm able to do for them. And I am with them or with him or her if he remembers me. So if you remember Allah Azza wa Jal, then Allah Azza wa Jal will aid you in the things that you need. إِذَا ذَكَرَنِي فِي نَفْسِهِ ذَكَرْتُهُ فِي نَفْسِهِ that Allah Azza wa Jal mentions that if he mentions me to himself, I make a mention of him to myself. So be from those that always does istighfar, always thanks Allah Azza wa Jal. And then the hadith carries on. وَإِن ذَكَرَنِي فِي مَلَئِن ذَكَرْتُهُ فِي مَلَئِن خَيْرٍ مِّنْهُمْ That if he mentions me, this servant, him or her, in an assembly, then I will make a mention of him in an assembly greater than that assembly that he mentioned me. Look at the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal. وَإِن تَقَرَّبَ إِلَيَّ بِشِبْرٍ تَقَرَّبْتُ إِلَيْهِ ذِرَاعًا 
Allah Azza wa Jal tells us that if you draw near to Allah Azza wa Jal, something so small in terms of doing good deeds, if you go, if you come close to Allah Azza wa Jal, then Allah Azza wa Jal will come close. That what? That Allah Azza wa Jal will come close. That if you draw near to Allah Azza wa Jal, an arm's length, i.e. you come close to Allah with good deeds, you put forth good deeds, then Allah Azza wa Jal will draw near to the servant, a cube, size of a cubit. And then the hadith goes on to mention, وَإِن تَقَرَّبَ إِلَيَّ ذِرَاعًا تَقَرَّبْتُ إِلَيْهِ بَاعًا وَإِن أَتَانِي يَمْشِي أَتَيْتُهُ هَرْوَلًا and this hadith is mentioned in Bukhari. If he draws near to me or she draws near to me, that which is the size of a cubit or an arm's length, sorry, then I draw near to him or her, the size of a cubit. And if he draws near to me, the distance of two outstretched arms, then this is the reward that you will get. So you can come closer to Allah Azza wa Jal, the size of a cubit, Allah Azza wa Jal will come close, the size of a ba'an, meaning arm's length two outstretched arms length. And if he comes to me walking, I go to him running. The meaning of this hadith, ikhwani, that if the more closer you get to Allah with good deeds, the more you put forth, then the closer Allah Azza wa Jal will be to you. And if you need Allah Azza wa Jal, then Allah Azza wa Jal will be able to aid you. I say this, and 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 I say this. Bismillah, Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. I ask Allah Azza wa Jal to forgive us all, our parents, and all the Muslims. Ikhwani, it's very important for us to try our utmost best to come close to Allah Azza wa Jal with good deeds. It doesn't take much. When you wake up in the morning, you thank Allah Azza wa Jal. You make the dua. Alhamdulillah, alladhi ahyani ba'da ma amatani wa ilayhim nushur. It's a blessing that Allah gave you another opportunity. So thank Allah Azza wa Jal. Before you go to sleep, remember Allah Azza wa Jal. Before you eat, when you travel, when you're with your friends, make a mention of Allah. Read the Quran. Put forth good deeds. Be kind to others. Do things that you would see in the Day of Judgment. The more you do that and the more mindful you are of Allah Azza wa Jal, then you would find that your life having a bliss and eternal Bliss after blessing after blessing after blessings. Allah Azza wa Jal will make your life easy. Allah mentions in the Quran, Ala bi dhikri Allahi tatma'innul qulub. Ala bi dhikri Allahi tatma'innul qulub. Verily, in the remembrance of Allah, do the hearts find rest and comfort and sakina. It should be from our utmost thing that we do the most is to read the Quran. Try your best to be from those that reads the Quran, that implements the Sunnah. Because if you do that, then you're going to make Allah Azza wa Jal pleased with you. Allah Azza wa Jal mentions in the Quran, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهُ وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَإِذَا تُلِيَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُهُ زَادَتْهُمْ إِيمَانًا وَعَلَى رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ the believers, who are they? They are the only ones of those who when Allah's is mentioned, when they hear the Quran, Allah, if they are remembered and reminded of Allah Azza wa Jal, meaning their hearts, they feel this sense of fear because they're reminded of Allah Azza wa Jal. When the verses are being recited, it increases them in Iman. And they put their trust in Allah Azza wa Jal. Remember and know that anything that is going to happen in your life, as the ulama they mention and they say, don't be from those that has anxiety and stress and depression. Don't be sad. Why are you thinking about things that happened 50 years ago, 10 years ago, a couple of months ago? If you made a mistake and you disobeyed Allah Azza wa Jal, don't be sad. Make istighfar. Make tawbah, repent to Allah and move on. And don't be from those that gets depression, stress, anxiety. Why are you depressed and stressing about the future? Maybe your situation is difficult, but why are you thinking about the future? When Allah Azza wa Jal has decreed each and everything that will take part in your life and take place in your life, 
50,000 years before you even came into existence. Think about the present. You're alive today. Today is an opportunity for you that Allah has decreed and given you and granted you. So act. Put forth good deeds. This is what is going to find that you're going to find as the Prophet says in an authentic hadith, يَتْبَعُ الْمَيِّتْ ثَلَاثَةً the deceased, when you go and you bury the deceased, three things follow him. Ahluhu wa maluhu wa amaluhu. His family members, his wealth, and his good deeds. Fayabqa wahid wa yarji ithnan. Yarji ithnan, yarji ithnan wa yabqa wahid. Two things won't follow him in his grave. His family members, they're going to have to move on. They're going to have to live their life. And also, his wealth won't benefit him then. It won't benefit him when he enters the grave. Nothing will be of benefit to you except that which you put forth, your good deeds. So make sure you strive and you work hard in order to what? To be from those that find something. Hasten and compete with one another in good deeds. And this is what you're going to find, brothers. We don't have enough time. Many of us, we think we're living and we're young and we have years and years. You don't know when. The time is going to come. None of us know. And in authentic hadith, the Prophet ﷺ tells us, أَقْرَبْ مَا يَكُونَ الْعَبْدْ مِنْ رَبِّهِ وَهُوَ سَاجِدٍ فَأَكْفِرُ الدُّعَى رواه مسلم. The closest time and stage you're close, or you're the closest to Allah is when you're what? In the state of sujood. So try your best to make dua to Allah Azzawajal. اللهم اهدنا إلى صراطك المستقيم اللهم يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك اللهم يا مصرف قلوب اللهم يا مصرف القلوب صرف قلوبنا على طاعتك اللهم يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغل يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تسمعون قوموا إلى صلاتكم يرحمكم الله